Okay. 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 Oh, that's a heck of an echo. That's a heck of an echo. I'm going to wait just a few minutes here. Wait just a few minutes here. And see if I can get some more folks on board. This was a spur of the moment thing, and uh, it's how I generally do these things. I all of a sudden get a bug up my butt to go ahead and, and uh, do something. And so I've been um, um, considering starting a a series of films about how to uh, process old 16 millimeter film and so that's um that's what I'm going to do but I'd like to wait for for just a few people if uh, if you don't mind um, I don't expect too many because I didn't give any warning but we'll see what happens if nothing else it'll be recorded and we can go from there. Daisy, darling, you got to move, honey. Oh, come here. Oh. That's Daisy. And uh, she's right in my way. <laughs> well, I'm going to do this regardless. So it'll be a... Uh, one of these things, at least two of us will know what happened. <laughs> this is a film called The Mask Maker. It is a, a, an educational film that was um, uh, last owned by the Sacramento County Office of Education. Uh, this is a Los Reels film video collection. At any rate, it's called The Mask Maker. It's on a 7-inch reel, 16-millimeter sound film. And... Well, what fell out of it is a um, please rewind film after last showing. So it's been a while. But The Mask Maker. Um, the Mask Maker becomes a, a man of many faces. How would you describe the characters he becomes? What do you think he is really like? In this uh, all allegorical uh, pantomime, The Mask Maker represents humanity. How do people sometimes mask their real identities? Uh, at any rate, so an educational film, and it's got uh, all of the uh, pertinent information right in there, if you can read it. So what we're going to do is put the film on. This is, a, um, this is a, an auto-rewind setup. This is the take-up reel. Like I said, it's a 7-inch reel. What we're going to do is put it on across here. I have it in case uh, it, it breaks or in case uh, there are broken parts in it. Um, this is a, a, a hot splicer to help splice that film back together again. And they call it a hot splicer because it heats up to, um, I think, about oh, 100 and... Oh, I, I can't even remember. Actually, it's on the back, I think. It tells you what it should be. No, it's not. It doesn't get very hot. It just gets it gets uh, pretty warm, and all it does is it speeds up the drying time of the uh, film cement. Everything's a mess here. Too much going on all the time. So there's a few things I'm going to do here. Um, one is we'll go ahead and we'll 
get some film cleaner. This is a film cleaner I use, and it's called Vitafilm. I've also used, and still do use, uh, something called Film Renew. So there's two different products here. Both of them stink, and I'm going to uh, close my office door here so that my wife doesn't have to uh, suffer through this. Because it does absolutely have an odor to it. It's not um, volatile. It's not a volatile old odor, but it does. It's a sickening sweet odor, really. Now wring it out. You can see it's pretty wet. These are microcloths. They're not the real nappy, nappy type. But um, on this, uh, this is a brake, or actually, um, I'm sorry, it's a, kind of a clutch. There's a brake over here, and then we can uh, uh, manually rewind using this. But uh, right now we're going to use and this appears to be color film and it's optical sound. And you can see there's a white strip across here and what that tells me is that the, um, uh, the um, sprocket holes have been all but destroyed and those are that's a repair that's a repair tape that's uh, put on there um, at one point or another this is how it would normally look but that as I said that white trip uh, white strip is a repair to repair the sprocket holes the sprocket holes represent the timing per frame um, on a projector um, in my case they actually matter a lot because I digitize them using this machine over here that uses the sprocket holes as the timing for when to take an, uh, a photograph of, of the, uh, or how many photographs per uh, feet to take. But, uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show, I'll show you how, how um, the entire process from uh, cleaning the film to putting it over there and digitizing the film. And I'll move the camera up so that you can see what I'm doing over there. And um, uh, we won't get through all of it today, probably, but um, and you can see that the film is, has, uh, there's, there's some, there's some serious dirt on that film. This is a, a, a brand new clean cloth. So, and we're coming to the end again here. And then, that wasn't really bad, but I do put that inside there afterward because I don't want, this stuff is expensive and, and um, I try not to um, let it evaporate Are a, kind of a pain in this type of reel. This is almost a lost art. There are not a lot of people that do this anymore. Um, I mean, there, there, are, there are companies out there, but I'm not a company. I'm just a, a preservationist, um, uh, a serious hobbyist. Um, and I try to preserve America 
as it used to be as much as I can. These old films are pretty much, ah, there we go. So this was a splice that went bad. And uh, you can see that it's also got the white tape along the edge, which means that uh, the uh, sprocket holes have been repaired, as I said before. And it continues on to this side over here, the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to I think what I'm going to do is so that you can actually see this, I'll pull it out of here a little bit. Maybe I should move that. I don't know if I can move that over there or not. There, kind of. So we're going to put it, the sprocket holes line up with the holes that are on here. And then this is a guide for side to side movement. And then there is a, a little blade that will, it's just a sharp edge on here. They're very, very sharp, or not, not sharp edges, just very cleanly cut so that they mesh right next to one another. And, uh, and that's what cuts it, cleaves it to where they're right next to one another. And I take, now this has a, um, a thing on here to, uh, that's supposed to clean the, uh, uh, the film wrap. You, it's designed so that you can take off the emulsion side because it won't, the uh, cement won't stick to the emulsion. But I've discovered that over the years those get wore out pretty bad and all they do is they tend to tear up the film. And this particular guy right here was made, I was uh, used by uh, NBC News, the close up department back in the day. Oh, what am I doing here? Um, I get out of sync. And this is film cement. And I put just a little bit on there and I put a little over the top and you close it up. When film goes bad, um, some film goes really bad, and it's when it goes bad, it uh, you cannot, uh, you can't glue it together. Uh, it won't, it won't cement uh, when it uh, uh, gets what they call uh, uh, VS or vinegar vinegar syndrome. Uh, vinegar syndrome. Um, destroys film. It's not just an odor. A lot of people think it's just an odor. It's not just an odor. It actually physically uh, depletes the film of whatever it is that makes it, uh, um, keeps it viable. I don't know if anybody's tried to make comments or not. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on here. Well, I made a comment. Uh, if anybody is able, could you please make a comment to make sure that I'm actually able to get comments on there? This one would do. This is all new. Um, this is the second time I've ever gone live, and um, I'm still working it out. Um, this kind of thing is not my, it's not what I, what I intended to be my um, forte. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm operating this, I should show you that. I'm operating this from a foot pedal. So. And I can feel that the uh, 
the sprocket holes on this are still not in great condition. So that's what it takes to to uh, clean the film. Um, here's something interesting I just uh, acquired. Um, this, if you're if you're from the Sacramento area and you've been here as long as I have in uh, in the uh, local area, um, this poor malformed beaten to death piece of metal here um, the little town of Roseville or Antelope Roseville real close to Antelope I guess they, they crossed into one another but Roseville California back in 1973 I think it was August of 73 um, there was a load of bombs going through uh, Roseville and uh, by train and um, uh, th that load of bombs blew up and it, uh, it just uh, destroyed the, the rail yard and, uh, um, and everything in the neighborhood and, and broke uh, I can't even, un, untold windows. The, um, the bomb blast was felt in the ground. Uh, I, 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 I lived uh, a little town about uh, 40 or 50 miles north of Sacramento and um, I was on a tractor and I swear to you, I was, I was like 16 years old, I felt I kept feeling a thump through the tractor. I've been operating that tractor for almost a, a season, so I was pretty familiar with what it did. It was a, a, a D8, I think it was. At any rate, um, I, uh, I felt those bomb blasts, those thumps in the ground. I'm pretty sure that far away because I, I remember feeling it, and then I got home, my mom told me that there was a, um, that the Roseville uh, train yard had blown up and all these. So this is actually a, a part of a bomb. This is a bomb that, and my, uh, I think what happened was I think it, it was a, a, a bomb's next to it blew up at almost the same time. This was probably between them because the huge divots and, and uh, holes and, and uh, everything that are in this um, tell a tale of, of ma a massive amount of force that hits it. As you can hear that. Um, and so the... Um, uh, Oh, cool. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I wasn't even looking, but thank you for uh, texting. Now, at least I know that works. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so this was a, this is a bomb, what's left of a bomb, from uh, a bomb that was destined for Vietnam during the um, Vietnam War era, 19, August 1973. So I'm going to put it on a stand. Uh, I have, I actually have, uh, a whole bunch of photographs, and if anybody wants to see those, um, um, hey, what's going on here, pal? Um, if anybody wants to see those photographs afterward of the rail yard uh, blown up, um, I can I can show you those when we're done with what we're doing over here. So if anybody wants to see them, let me know. Um, so I'm going to move things around a little bit here. Take our little bomb. Because the next part of this, I have a very small office. Um, have a little bit of patience here for just a minute. Let's get this, this moved over. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this same film we're working with here. And that's the uh, robot from Lost in Space inside that computer over there. This guy right here. My, one of my favorite, growing up, my, one of my favorite shows. So we're, um, <laughs> we're putting it on. Um, I, um, Last film I did was 8mm film. And this is a film gate, and it's set up for 8mm film. I just completed, I don't know if you can see the screen there or not. Uh, let's move that a little bit there. Okay, so this, on the screen right here is a film 
that I did not long ago. This is a German film uh, from World War I. And uh, Landung auf Orlof, Ofel, 1970. It's a, it's a World War I sound, uh, 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 silent film. And uh, they um, go from loading the ships uh, to uh, uh, their their travel to where, whatever I don't know if they're going to France I don't know I don't know where they're going where their battlefront is but they load the ships and then they um, unload at wherever they're going and uh, and they show the travel in between so it's it's pretty interesting uh, we're going to go here though and we're going to set this for 16 millimeter film right there. And let's get rid of that. We're going to call this Ed Film A. And say OK. OK, so that's set. This right here needs to be. So this is an eight millimeter sound gate um, on uh, for the um, retro scan machine. This is a 16 millimeter sound gate for that same machine. So we're going to we're going to use that. I'm going to uh, wipe this off. Um, I know that there are companies out there that have this same machine and they, they do this for a living. Uh, they, they transfer film for, for people for a living. And um, they, they charge, I think, $25 per setup. So if, you, if they're, if they're um, working, uh, if you send them something that has a, a package that has 8 millimeter, uh, super 8 millimeter, and 16 millimeter, um, you're going to pay for at least one setup fee because they're switching between the 8 and uh, 16 and probably two setup fees because uh, they're going to switch between 8, Super 8, and then 16. You have to change the uh, length of the, the uh, camera lens. This this is the length that I use for regular eight millimeter, and this is the uh, length of uh, for uh, sixteen millimeter. And what those lengths are. I'm not a camera guy, so I really don't know. Uh, let me see here. Oh, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate that. Mr. Penning, it's nice to see you, pal. So we're going to digitize the film that we just cleaned. Come on, don't be annoying. There we go.
Now this is color film, and from what it looks like to me, it, lo it looks like it's really red, which means the blue has leached out of it over the years. We're going to do a preview on here. And this is what we just worked on. Let me see here. Let me, again, let me switch this camera a little bit. Um, because now I want you to see what what is happening here. I'm going to lower this down just a tad if I can. That probably is do it. Now let's see, you can get all of that. All right. So we're going to adjust this now. It needs to be adjusted to... that. I'll get a second here. All right, coming up. There we go. Oh, nice. Now, this is a soundtrack. These are sprocket holes on this side. And I try to get as much of both as I can. There's no soundtrack yet. That'll wait till it gets to the... There's a the soundtrack. We just come in right there. And we're going to uh, reduce some of that color, that, a, a, that red down to add a tad of blue. Okay, and we're we're pretty much in the center. And you can see here this is all repaired. Um, it's an uh, Encyclopedia Botanica film. But that's this is all repair that's been done to the uh, sprocket hole area. Let's get this back over here a little tiny bit more. Okay, I think we've about got probably about right, right there. All right, so I'm going to rewind uh, quite a ways back. This, um, because of that uh, sprocket hole damage and this white uh, repair tape on there, it, uh, it makes it sticky going through the rollers. And um, it uh, makes it sticky going through the rollers and, and uh, puts a lot of stra uh, strain on the motors. Okay, so we're going to uh, stop the preview and actually start. Now I'll start. And that should do it. The, um, uh, this film is in the public archive. Um, or public, do I'm sorry, public domain. And the reason was is because uh, uh, back in the 60s, Encyclopedia Britannica chose not to have their film, uh, chose not to have their film um, uh, pay to have it, uh, the copyright up on it. Yes, sir, I understand that, Mr. Penning.
Oh, nice. Just it just broke. So we'll take this guy, a little splicer unit, and bring it over here. Well, bring it over here. And again, it broke clean, so it broke at another at another original splice. This is just part of the process that you have to go through when, when doing this. And I think what I'm going to do is, because of the way this is going through, I'm not going to put it through all of the, uh, oh yeah, that's really, that's really sticky. I'm going to have to clean that up too before I run it. Uh, the, these uh, splice tapes, the splice tape that they put on here, rather, is, um, somehow makes that really sticky in there. So I won't run it through all the rollers. Let's take some pressure off of it. I do that to keep, there's a timer on this and if you, if it realizes that there's nothing happening, it'll turn the, uh, It'll turn the um, uh, machine off and restart. I'd rather not restart it, rather just go ahead and back it up a little bit, and I'll catch it later on and post edit. Meanwhile, let me set. Uh, work. I tried cheating on it. It didn't work. I didn't want to take out another frame, but uh, sometimes you have to. Every frame that you take out removes a, a tiny bit of information, which could be video or it could be audio. Well, I was trying to use the same splice area because it came out nice and clean. It didn't like that, so we have to take out, uh, uh, we have to remove two frames. And uh, what we're doing here, as I mentioned earlier, I'm removing the emulsion off of one side and just trying to score the other side. This uh, uh, film cement will not adhere to the emulsion, the film emulsion. And uh, that's a hot splicer, and it, um, I don't remember what the temperature was on that. Someplace I have a, you know, someplace I have a, a gun that checks the temperature. I don't see it anywhere, I don't know. I haven't needed it for quite some time. And we lost it, so we'll have to, uh, I'll just make two parts out of this. And I'll glue it back together again, digitally, okay. Okay, so we'll go back and um, wipe past that. I'm not going to use that for sure. Actually, I, would do, I do want to clean that just a tiny bit first. Nice.
Okay. That should help. it. And here you can catch, there's uh, the frames, per frames, we just rolled over to 100 frames at uh, uh, three, uh, three feet, uh, it's about to roll over four feet. And there's zero drop frames at 16 millimeter film. Uh, it's positive film, because I can do a negative or positive. And that jumping is the, uh, is the reason it's jumping like it is right now is because of the um, sprocket hole alignment. Um, this um, these LEDs keep track of the uh, numbers of sprocket holes that goes by, and um, that's how it counts everything. And it also tells this camera up here uh, how often to take a photograph, a picture, because each individual uh, frame is photographed as it goes through the, the uh, transport mechanism. And so if you can hang with it, um, this needs to, uh, we need to go through there. Um, I mentioned that uh, I had those uh, photographs from the bombing uh, that I showed you the, the bomb. Does anybody want to see that? I'll take that as a no. Actually, this machine is hard to come by anymore because uh, the guy doesn't make them. Funny thing about that is, is that um, I bought this machine. This is my second one of these. The first one was, uh, was not a 2K machine. It was a, 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 a I can't remember what it was, um, but the resolution, it was low resolution, whatever it was. Um, so I decided, well, the only the, the real differences were it was in the transport system and the camera, but I decided because the other one had a lot of uh, I'd had a lot of use that I was going to change machines. So, um, so what I did was I decided to uh, uh, buy a new machine, and I had a I had a, a backer that uh, helped me purchase this particular one. But the interesting part was is that a month and a half or two months I forget right after I bought this. The guy that builds these uh, announced that he had a brand new machine, which did a whole lot more, be a better job. So this cost me, with all the with all the uh, film gates, almost twelve thousand dollars. The new machine, with all the same same equipment, and a much better machine, would have cost me close to thirteen. I would have certainly bought that, but he didn't tell me that. Kind of a kind of a raw deal there. Um, okay, let me go ahead and pull these up. Roseville. Okay, Roseville. Okay, we can come back to that guy in a little bit. Let me, uh, See if I can't give you a view now of uh, this computer over here. And we'll drop this down a little bit again. So what you're looking at here is um, Uh, 
Again, this right here, this piece of metal, traumatized piece of metal, <laughs> was actually a bomb that was destined uh, for um, Uh, uh, it was destined for um, Vietnam in 1973, and uh, it, nor it, and the other um, bombs that were with it made it. So this is the Roseville, California rail yard uh, off of Antelope Road in August of 1973. And um, as a have a, uh, a bomb crater, and you can see the rails right here. These are some of the bombs right here. There's a little piece of bomb right there, a little piece right there. But it did a, an extraordinary amount of da damage. Um, the houses, there's houses that are out in here that all those houses all lost. Uh, lost their windows. And you can see right there is one of the bombs right there, and the same kind of piece of metal that I, that I have. Um, my understanding is that the military, there's a bomb. My understanding is the military uh, got all of this. Uh, there's another, another bomb that peeled back. Um, the military got these and um, got all the material, and they turned them back into bombs, I suspect. You can see one there that got peeled open. A couple here that were that did that flared off but didn't explode, just the heat got to them, I guess. Um, that's actually tomato sauce. Heinz, destined for Heinz ketchup. Never made it. Now that's a good example right there of one of those. Same kind of metal that I've got. You can see how it's all split open and everything. Mine was, in a, my, I believe the piece that I have was in amongst uh, a whole bunch of them and they, they all went off around it. That's why it's got the damage that it does. Ours is a very similar piece, I think, right there. So that's the Roseville uh, California explosion back then. Um, let's see. Um, what do you have? What do you have that you need to digitize? I'm going to uh, move this back over to where it was. Why don't you, I, uh, listen, I, I, I digitize that stuff for people um, at, a, at, a, at a pretty decent rate. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not, um, I mean, I've seen it go for as much as um, 60 cents a foot, um, and I do it for 22 cents a foot. So if, uh, if you're interested in, in having them done, I'd, I'd be willing to go ahead and do them for you, and I'll go ahead and I'll run them through the, uh, through the process, and you ought to see some of the t stuff that I've done. That let me see if I can pull up something here I did recently that was very, very cool. Um, I'll pull the camera back over here again. Time machine. Let's see, it's got to be under this one.
Okay, what I'm going to show you um, is uh, some 8 millimeter film. And um, something I give it for somebody. But this, this, this is not your typical 8 millimeter film. This is after a couple hours worth of work to go ahead and get it to be this quality. That's a wedding in Southern California. I'm just going to show you a short piece of it because I, I should have, but I didn't do, I didn't ask the, the folks if I could even use this. But you can see the quality of this. Um, let's see. And it's not it's not easy to get that quality in eight millimeter. I'm telling you. Um, That's will be. I've got some other stuff that's really interesting, but um, it's on the other machine. At any rate, so it's uh, you can get really good quality out of eight millimeter, but it takes a lot of work to do it. Not a problem. Take a look. Find what, find out what you like, uh, the important ones, and then send them through me and and send them to me and and um, and uh, we'll we'll get them get them. Do that and send me a um, uh, USB drive. I'll put them on the USB drive in whatever format you want, but I'll I'll have a they'll be in the raw form and the finished form. No, not not everything turns out that great. Like I said, that was a lot of work doing that one. And we're coming to the end of this. But most, if 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 the film was taken in in, um, in decent light and uh, it's not all shaky and everything, uh, a lot of times I can clean it up really really nice. The Art of Silence. All right, so we're done with that guy. And we'll do part two. I'll do B, rather. Okay, let me come back over to here and grab this, let it run through, actually, but... that run um, and we're not going to need the splicer any longer so we'll unplug that guy and we're going to move this one over here and um, I'm going to show you how I um, Let me see the uh, first you go to this guy, and um, we're going to turn both of these. We're going to export those guys. Is 
go down to add right here. I'm going to export them, and uh, we're going to do them at um, 23.976 frames per second. And uh, all that's good. Okay, and they're going to be in 4K. And uh, we're going to go export now. Uh, it shouldn't take very long. But you're doing, um, you're seeing this in real time. This is, this is what I do, and this is every film that I do. Um, Michael Selby, uh, normally, normally hell. I'm trying to get to the point where I'm where I'm doing this. Um, I have I've only done one other one, and it was a test. This is actually a test as well, I suppose, because I didn't let anybody know I was doing it. Um, I'm going to uh, figure out how. I'm, I'm just in the process of trying to figure out how to make the, make all this work. And uh, I, I guess this is kind of working. If people don't mind getting seasick while I move the camera around. Um, but uh, uh, my intention is, is to do uh, this. Uh, I, I started processing this one 16 millimeter film, uh, and I'm going to show you what it takes to create a film that's destined for YouTube. And most of the stuff is really junk when you when it arrives at my doorstep. It's like this film I just did. There's been a lot of repair work done on this, and. Um, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to turn it into something that's actually worth watching on, uh, on YouTube. So, and that's doing a lot of digital repair after in post-production and, you know, after it's been digitized. I'm going to take this guy and put it back where it was. And can. Nice. There it is. Okay, that film uh, that you just saw, that this film that I just digi uh, digitized, is called um, uh, The Mask Maker. And uh, it says uh, here that uh, the mask maker becomes a part, uh, becomes a man of many faces. How would you describe it? It's for children. Uh, but I, I think that it's, um, these old films, I'm 64 years old, and these old films are what I grew up on, and I didn't turn out quite so bad. And so I figured maybe if we, I digitize them and parents showed them. I, I don't recommend any of my, fil my films for children because um, you never know when you recommend the wrong thing, and that gets you in all kinds of trouble with, uh, with YouTube. So if a parent wants to, share it with their children, that's another question. You know, it's strictly up to them after they've seen it and they think it's okay, then, uh, and oh, this is Marcel Marceau, I remember him. That guy was pretty famous at one time. Um, anyway, if, you, if the parents like, like this and they want to share it with their children, well, that's, uh, that's a good thing, so. Another project I'm working on right now while I'm waiting for this to process. Uh, this, uh, and I've mentioned this before, I'm going to show it again because uh, I'm only about halfway through it, but it is getting there. Um, this, this is a, a letter from World War I, and um, if you can read the name uh, at the top, it says Captain James N. Hall. Now that's... Um, I'll just give you a, uh, a heads up. That's James Norman Hall. And uh, if uh, anybody here is much of a reader or likes um, old movies, they uh, maybe might even know the, a little bit of a history of the, uh, the sailing ship in San Francisco uh, in their museum over there. There's a sailing ship in the harbor or the bay or whatever called the Baclutha. And uh, you might know some history about that. But James Norman Hall and that ship have something in common. Um, Mr. Hall wrote the book Mutiny on the Bounty, or was co-writer for the book Mutiny on the Bounty. And the, and the uh, Bacluthe played the part of the bounty in, in that uh, movie. 
Um, I have, I also have film of that, which is really kind of cool, kind of cool. So um, Mr. Hall was also, uh, he has uh, several things, oh, here, we're done. Uh, several things that uh, makes him famous aside from that, but uh, uh, you'll see that in an up and coming film I've got, I've got going on. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember the cassettes, play, <laughs> the cassette audios playing. But, but um, uh, we had um, we had a lot of uh, sixteen millimeter film uh, when I was a kid. Okay, so we've got that done. Now the next process, and again, remember this is only a, a seven inch reel, and this is about a twelve minute film. Let's get rid of that, and we're going to. I'm going to save this. As save. This is Adobe Premiere, and um, and it's uh, my editor of choice. This is uh, Adobe After Effects again, my editor of choice. Uh, it, all these programs have such a, a huge learning curve uh, that um, let's see here. I don't need that any longer. I don't need this. Is a uh, all films have an edge code, and um, the edge code you'll notice uh, like uh, it might have a circle and a square. It means it, they did they they repeat these so. Um, this circle and square could be 1922, 1942, or 1962. And you can pretty much look at a film, unless it's of a mountain that doesn't change, you can look at a film and tell uh, what it's uh, about when it was shot. And so I tried to, I was just doing a whole bunch of 8 millimeter films the other day, and um, I was looking for the edge codes, and they're, all of them turned out to be about 1956. Um, okay, so then we're going to go to... Uh, this is a program called AEO Light. Now, this is a, um, a public domain, uh, not public domain, open source um, a piece of software. And it was um, uh, just a, a fantastic uh, little piece of software. And what we do is we, um, we uh, open a new project. And I go to, let's see, where did I put those at? It must be in, uh, on D drive. It is, okay. Oh. Okay, we're gonna do two of these. We have to do part one and two um, because I had to cut it into pieces. Let's say open and buff that up here. And uh, we're going to do a set in, do a set out. We're extracting the sound right now. This is the sound. This is a sound um, uh, on the, uh, it's optical sound. And um, while I, you can't hear it right now, I'm gonna turn it into sound in just a few minutes here with the use of the software. Now we're bordering cap the, a capture area and we only really wanna capture this area right here. So I gotta be careful how much I exclude from that. Um, and then, uh, we want to capture the frame. The frame, you can see the line across the top right there, and that's about what the frame is. And um, that's the bottom area right there, and that's pretty much all the information we need out of that. Then we come over here and we calibrate it, which should be very, fairly quickly. Um, you're calibrating, what you're doing is, a lot of times uh, film will be of a different, um, it'll be lighter or darker, depending on what part of the film you're, you're, you're you've digitized uh, the beginning at the end or someplace in the middle, it could be lighter or darker, which creates problems. So this um, calibrates that to where it's all the same. And then we go to, uh, let me see here, what was that? The first one copy actually should do it this way
There we go. Do that, extract, go to extract, to name in, go to D drive. and add film. Come on. And then save and OK. That's going to be really quick. Um, the next one will take about 20 minutes and we'll go on to something else. Um, this is kind of a, a marathon thing, I guess, but really, and that's why I chose uh, using only a seven minute film. Test Cameron, wow, that's a ways away, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. That's very cool. So getting back to um, this letter, um, uh, the letter is to a Mr. George Cartwright Greener in uh, Boston. Let me put that back over there. We're about to switch over to the next one. That one's done. And then we'll do this one. Let me get rid of that. And we... New project. Video files. That one. Let's say yes. We're here, and again, we set in the beginning, and we want to set our out time and uh, get a little bit of a okay, the soundtrack. I try to get as wide as I can, but uh, it's difficult with this. Is, um, so, again, we're going to put our bounding box on there. Our bounding guide, that's what we want to capture. And that's the top of the frame. And we go to the middle of the bottom of the frame. And go to image and then calibrate. So uh, James Norman Hall wrote, uh, co-wrote Mutiny on the Bounty. He also um, was in the, the uh, and during World War I, uh, one, he was in the British Army as a machine gunner. He was in the uh, Lafayette Escadrille as an, uh, um, an airman for uh, the French. And then he was in uh, the uh, US Air Corps as an airman. All right, so then we go to extract audio, extract, and then we put our name in up there, and then browse, going to where we want to go, the same directory the rest of the other ones in, and say, OK. So, so he's pretty famous for that. And then, of course, he's famous for all the books he wrote, including uh, Mutiny on a Bounty, and that was one of my, my favorite. That's why I keep mentioning that. And is also, I, ha I have film of the, um, uh, the bounty um, being dressed up, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the uh, Baklutha being dressed up for that part in the Mutiny on the Bounty in 1936, I believe it was, or 33, 33 or 36. Um, but this letter is uh, this letter is from him while he's in he's in a uh, German prisoner of war uh, camp. So he's in this German prisoner of war camp, and he's writing to um, his um, good friend George Courtright, and he starts off with dear old Courtright, and this is August twenty fourth, nineteen eighteen. So he's only got about six months that he'll be in a prisoner of war camp, but this describes how he got shot down and, um, and uh, a lot of other things. And so what I do is I kind of give a little bit of a history about the gentleman and, um, and uh, a lot of what's actually in this letter. Interesting things. Um, I knew that this was going to have some wait time, so let me see if I've got on here. Yeah, I I I hadn't got it. Um, um, 
um, the, like I said, I, I, was, I was, when I first brought that up, uh, I intended on getting it done right away, but there's a lot more to that than, because I had to do a lot of hunting for visuals. And, um, and I've got a lot of it myself because I have a lot of World War I stuff in my archives. Uh, stuff that I've digitized of my own uh, collection, photo albums, photographs, and negatives over the years. <coughs> um, let me see here. Look and see if I've got that Bekluth on this drive. Come on, you. I have terabytes of stuff, and, and it takes a, a while to uh, uh, get access to it. There we go. It's popping up. Finished files. Keep. Hmm. Not on here. It may be on here though. Oh, this is interesting, but uh, this uh, little film right here, <clears throat> this is on, this is on uh, uh, 35, 35 millimeter, this is 35 millimeter film, um, that's the soundtrack, the soundtrack running over on this side over here, um, but it's a uh, 35 millimeter nitrate film, and um, very, uh, kind of stable, unstable, but I, I digitized that. Uh, I don't have the ability to do 35 millimeter. Let me put it back again. I, keep in mind, I don't, I don't have the ability to do 35 millimeter. What you're seeing here, um, I captured this frame by frame by frame. Uh, it, just to do this little part right here, probably took me the better part of a day. Just to get this little, little section here. This is uh, 21 seconds. And I haven't, I could, I could get the, the sound off of this, actually. Uh, I should do that. Um, and uh, this is, a, this is a editing film splices. It pops up here, here we go. And if you watch, you see there's a, there's a splice right here. And what you have to do is you have to take a, um, um, what you're going to do, what I'm doing here is I'm taking a photograph of the frame before the splice, and I'm going to take a photograph of the frame after the splice, or generally I do, sometimes I don't, depending on movement. Yes, there's the one after the splice, and I put that in there. And then now you won't be able to see the... Uh, There's no, no more uh, damage from the film. You're able to hide that damage. Then that's what we're going to do when we're done with this right here. Many folks don't like or don't have the patience for this, but I'm still going to run it, and I'll keep on going with it because... Um, Actually, that's not true, uh, Mr. Penning. I, I have, uh, I've gotten, I can't tell you how many films from your area. Um, uh, and uh, one of the interesting things was is that there was a, a few big, very big film producers there. Um, one of, actually, one of them was Ford. 
um, it was in uh, in the area at any rate uh, in Detroit. Um, but the Ford Ford had a big uh, uh, film producing outfit, and they did all kinds of things. Um, and not only that, but see, a lot of the stuff that I run into is not. Uh, the, let's put it this way: my heart is not in in the educational sound films. My heart is in um, these old uh, mom and pop films. You know, the vacations, the Christmas films, the uh, the birthdays, the parties, the, um, uh, the uh, they're they're going out fishing. Um, that's where my heart's at. And I've got, I've, I have, I, I have, well, I have, let me give you an idea. Um, okay, that, let's see here. Okay, you see all the stuff that's in here. These are all drawers, and they, they pull out that far. And each one of these is full of films. Now, these are actually, uh, these are laying on top, but they're stacked this way going across. So these, this is full of seven inch wheels and then there's other stuff laying on top. This is full of this size film plus a bunch of seven inch reels in the bottom. This one is the same way. Oh, this, is, this one's fill, uh, got stuffed with uh, uh, 12 inch reels uh, and uh, then we've got two more drawers, and they're stuffed with 7-inch and different size films. So um, while I do enjoy uh, those type of films to an extent, my heart is in the mom and pop stuff. Right. Uh, there are not a lot of stuff in local antique stores either, but I've had... Uh, some of my best finds have come from local antique stores. I had one gal, I just tell people what I'm looking for, and I dropped my card off, and I had a gal, a gal contact me. Uh, this is now going on about eight years ago, but she calls me up and says, I've got, um, uh, uh, she says, I've got um, uh, three very, very large boxes of film. Well, to me, large boxes of film could be well, almost anything, but when I got there, she was right. She had three very large boxes of film, and I think there was probably 65 uh, films in there total, and they were all 16 millimeter, some sound, some not. But what they were was they were, there was a guy that was uh, infatuated with uh, the railroads, and he went around all over the, the United States and part of the world filming um, old railroads and stuff. And... Um, so uh, I asked her, I said, what did you want for those? She said, well, I'll take $100. Holy crap, the stuff that was in there was incredible. Um, in fact, some of it's uh, the, um, uh, the Freedom Train, I've got, uh, the, the, and the uh, California Zephyr, and, and uh, those are just a couple of my favorites that I put on there, on, uh, on YouTube. So those are on there as well. But uh, yeah, it's, um, Craigslist is another place I watch. Um, uh, check out Craigslist. Take a look. Um, uh, the other thing is, is fa uh, Facebook. Go to Facebook in their marketplace and look. There's people I've gotten 30. In fact, that 35 millimeter film I just showed you, the lady dancing, uh, that is a, that was a Facebook find. And after a while, you get people that uh, they know who you are, and uh, they'll give you a call. If they run across stuff, and I've got people that uh, so many people now that know that I, I uh, that I this is my passion, um, that they they'll call me a lot of times and tell me tell me what they've got. This is something that's really interesting. That is, um, this is actually drawing. It's modern machines. I know it, it's it's in bad shape up at the top, but. I put it in this frame because this is a um, modern machines, and you can look at the modern machines, and they're they're pretty old. But it was some young man, and um, uh, in the 40s, I'm thinking. Let me see the signature is right there. Jack Crosby, a young guy named Jack Crosby, drew this, and I'm suspecting it was, you know, maybe for school or maybe it was just 
something he was enjoying doing, but he did a really good job of it. So I put, the, put it in this frame and I'll find room on one of my walls to hang it up somewhere. But it's just some of the neat things that I found. The top drawer in that same cabinet that I was just showing you, that, uh, that top drawer is absolutely uh, stuffed with um, uh, photographs and documents and uh, uh, of, of all kinds of types and, and uh, stuff. This uh, something else I picked up. If you're from California, you might know who this guy is. If you're not from California, then you won't. Um, probably, but uh, if the um, the guy that signed this, uh, the governor, was governor of California, Hiram uh, W. Johnson, um, and this is 1911. This is something from the. Uh, I'm going to donate this to the um, National Guard Museum uh, here in Sacramento. Um, so that's uh, that's going to go to them. But it's just some of the interesting things I find. One of the things I was thinking about doing because I need to try and get um, a subscribership going on on Patreon, and uh, I've, I've talked about this before. Um, keep watching, keep watching uh, uh, eBay because that was one of the first things you said was eBay. But uh, that's uh, in the beginning. I got that's that's where I got everything in the very beginning was uh, was eBay, and that was uh, over a period of years. Um, but I need to start getting uh, a, more of a Patreon following. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to get together kind of like a. Um, uh, I have really interesting things here. Well, for instance, um, well, it's not it's not up here. I have a I have a check written by uh, the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz uh, to an organization in. Mississippi or Missouri as a donation, um, but uh, I always said um, that check proves the Tin Man had a heart after all. But um, uh, it was written in 1950 something or another. I have, I have, uh, I have a lot of really cool documents and photographs, and what I'm thinking about doing is doing like a, um, uh, like a drawing uh, once a month and uh, and giving away, and I and I think I'm going to change the uh, structure of the uh, Patreon. I think I'm going to uh, drop it. I think I'm going to do a dollar and uh, three dollar, and um, and just uh, um, make it so that more people will go there to see commercial-free uh, stuff and um, stuff more stuff like this, and maybe ha take a chance on have a chance to win something. Part of history. Um, maybe ginger ale. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh no kidding. <laughs> um, in the uh, top shelf, you might have to turn the light on. I'm talking too much, so I'm dying of thirst here. Well, there are there is an interest in what I'm doing. I I mean I know that. Um, uh, some of the comments that I've had, I just, uh, I got a, um, I got a, a, a card from somebody out of the blue the other day, and I don't know where it's at now, talking, you know, and they, they, they thank me for what I'm doing, and, because this is, um, this is preserving history, it's preserving, uh, not just, uh, not just American history, but there's stuff from other countries on here as well, you know, I, although I don't get a lot of that stuff, because, after all, I'm in America, but, all right, that's done. So we've done the sound extraction for both pieces of that film. And um, I'll play that for a second. This is Christmas 1957 in Oklahoma. Now when I'm done, this will be all stabilized because I'll use the uh, sprocket holes 
as registration for um, uh, Adobe After Effects stabilization feature. Oh, I love her dress. Not a great dress. Oh, yeah, you guys can see it well. Okay. And the bicycle. I have one of those myself. My dad fixed up for me. I remember seeing this film. Uh, let me see here. I love these films. You never know what you're going to find. Thank you, dear. My wife just brought me uh, my favorite drink, Squirt. I've got some really neat stuff from old Hollywood, Tess. Um, got one I'm going to be reproducing pretty soon here. It's the making of the movie Santa Fe, and it takes a, takes you, much like I'm doing with this, it takes you from the very beginning of the idea of creating the film um, from the book all the way through the very end of production. And um, I've done it before, but it, it just didn't turn out very well. Nice car. But um, eventually I'll, I'll, all this stuff will be on there. Um, there's a, a, well, here you go. This, this, this is a, there, <laughs> this guy that's driving the boat was actually the owner and, um, and uh, creator of uh, Tower of Records. And uh, this man contacted me not long ago uh, uh, telling me that uh, about him and his, uh, he, they all worked for Tower of Records, if anybody remembers Tower of Records in Sacramento, or in California. The, uh, I think it was in, uh, I think it was just in California, but I'm not sure. But uh, I was contacted by him, and I was contacted by the son of one of these guys but the Tower of Records, the owner, is actually driving the boat. But that's a surfboard behind that boat, and they're surfing the, the, uh, surfing the wake of the, of the boat. Um, I did want to show you something else here, but uh, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get on to what we need to get on to. That's kind of interesting. This is a California State Fair. Kind of interesting. In a damaging sort of way. <laughs> Another uh, film that I'm working on right now, and this is really, this this is going to take me weeks to finish this, but um, let me see here. Let's open that up for just a second, just to give you an idea. Um, close project. Yes. Just to kind of give you an idea of what this is. This is the impeachment of Nixon. Now, this film, for the most part, was in pretty good condition. And you can see here. Uh, let's get some sound to it. Something necessary to preserve a strong presidency. The truth is that we will permanently weaken not only the presidency, but our entire constitutional well, I don't know why it's system if we it. fail, to, fail to impeach a president who has so flagrantly violated the public trust and his own oath of office. Okay, so you can see the condition of it's not bad here, but when you get up to this point right here, it starts to go really bad. And you can see all of the corrections that I have to, let's, the, every one of these is a cor correction. And so all of these right here are images that I've had to take of this film to repair spots in it. Let me show you why. So that's repair work there. 
this is what it looks like. And you can see it's, the sprocket holes are not moving. So this is actually filmed. It was recorded. They recorded all the damage. Good partner for me. And I think a good partner. If the sprocket holes were moving, I'd say this is a problem with the film. It's not. It's a problem with the recording of the original source. the name of Nelson Rockefeller to the Congress of the United States. So every one of those jumps, I have to get rid of. And you see all this right here? Let me pull this back. These are all repairs. Every one of those is a repair. Now, now watch and see what it looks like after the repair. A person whose long record of accomplishment in the government and outside is well known. He comes from a family that has long been associated with the building of a better America. So that's, I mean, you, you've got to have patience. You have to have passion. You have to really love what you're doing. Because you can see all of that, that's uh, 29, that's only, <laughs> that's, that's about two minutes. That's less, than, that's less than two minutes. But it's taken me a week to get there. And I still have all this to go. So it'll be a couple, three weeks before I get done with this. And um, we'll get to it eventually. All right, so we close this project and we go back up to Rose Parade. Now this right here is something that we're going to show you pretty soon, and it's pretty incredible. I've got to uh, uh, take a look at it. Um, uh, Rose Parade, go here. Close project. That's not what I want. I actually want that. Why have I got all that stuff in there? That shouldn't be in there. Okay, so we're going to go to... Okay, these are the two pieces of film that we... Remember, we had to cut it into two pieces because it didn't want to come out. It, had the, uh, it was broken. All right, so we're going to... Get that up there, and we're going to move this up to there. We're going to expand all tracks. Okay, so I'll pull this on up here to get to the point where we actually have. And this says this work may not be transmitted by television or other devices. Processing copy. It's not. No, it's it's in the public domain. It's there's no copyright on this on this just these films anymore. And there's the sound, and you can see the soundtrack right here. That's what we extracted. Now, when you when we go back, let's take a look at all this. What we're doing here. Let's move that up a little bit till we get to a bit. All right, right there. See all that jumping? How it's taking a dive and come back up. So this is what I was talking about. This is where, if this was, if there was no sound to this, I would just cut that out. But because there's sound, if I was to cut it out, um, then it shrinks our video, and our video and audio at the end will no longer be synced. And I, I, I it makes it really makes me mad. I'm watching now. I, I really don't like Amazon Prime. I don't like watching the crap that's on there. Um, but uh, because I, every, you, if you don't buy from Amazon anymore, you can't get the things that you need. Uh, it's really difficult. There are, because brick and mortars are gone. My favorite store in the world was Fry's Electronics. Um, I built, I've built uh, probably 10 computers for those guys over the years. Um, this computer that you see over here, that was built um, through Fry's Electronics. The last thing I ever bought from Fry's was that computer to build it. The computer that's way down at the end down there, um, you can see the, uh, 
there's a USB, orange USB stick sticking out of it. I built that 10 years ago, but I've, I've rebuilt it twice since then. Um, so Fry's was my, uh, my favorite place in the world to, to do things. Let me get this back where it belongs. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's, that's right. <laughs> um, you're not a criminal. I'm not, I'm not a criminal. Yeah, it's, he did say that. Um, okay, so uh, so like I said, if we if we if we cut that out of there by the end by the end of this thing, we'd have so many pieces missing, and you have to you know pull them up together so there's not a blank spot in the film that the audio and, and the video would would never sync. So what you do is we go ahead and we take a picture of it and we do it in TIFF because it has more information uh, per um, in, in TIFF than JPEG and you have you, you can use any one of these on uh, uh, formats but I use TIFF and uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to say uh, do that and it's going to be imported into the project and you go like that and put it on the timeline and then we go to the next one the other side of it we take another picture and we do that again and we got another one up here So I think what I'll do is I'll I'll just um, because this is not moving, it's a, a still. Come on, get over there, you. Um, it's a still a, a image, pretty much on film. Now you see, there's no, there's no, it's not jumping up and down. And here we're going to go back because we have a uh, that's a splice, and so and the splice. It's like I was telling you before, we lose two frames. That's one frame we'll lose, and that's two frames we'll lose through a, spl uh, through a splice. So, and, and I'm gonna go back a bit further because you know, I'll tell you the truth, like I said, this is not moving. There's no movement in this. It's just, this is a still image they filmed or uh, uh, part of the uh, process. But you see, it's got a lot of dirt and stuff right here. And uh, actually it's glue from this uh, repair work that was done on the, um, on the uh, sprocket holes. So I'm gonna take a, a picture right there. I'm gonna put it on here. Now it's gonna be completely still for that section. It won't move. See, not, not moving at all, but then you come back to, we got another, we have that, that splice right there. And it's not gonna work out too well because see, uh, the film is moving. Uh, you can see, that, see the distance here. So the film is waving back and forth, so we're not going to, I was hoping to get rid of everything all at one time. Let's just do this. Uh, we're going to take a picture here. And we're going to take a picture on the other side of it. And we'll use one of these, this one right here. Now, the splice is gone. Again, we have another splice. Marcel Marceau, I remember that guy. I think what I'm going to do is just do that. And here we have, you can hear this. You hear that? The pop. So what you do is you come down here on the on the, uh, the the sound. This is the this is uh, this is our sound, and you can tell. You see that that little spike right there, and that's what's causing that that uh, that pop sound. So. What we do is we come down here and we just eliminate that. That pulls the volume down so we don't hear that at all. Now there's a tiny little bit of a gap, but we have the same thing here. There's a tiny little bit of gap in the sound, but not enough to, the, I, in my opinion, the, the pop is more annoying than the, um, than the gap in, in noise. All right, and you see how this is all, all, all jumping up and down? So we're gonna go back now that I've gotten those two out of the way. Uh. Okay, and there's not much I can do about that. See how it jumps? It's not a jump, it's a drop. And I 
I could fix that actually. So what I'll do is um, I'll fix that afterward because what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut it right here on uh, when the time when the uh, when I make sure that the sound and everything is synced. I'll go and I'll run it through so it's one piece of film again. In other words, this will be incorporated into it, all the, the repairs that I make. Then I'll go ahead and I'll run it again and I'll take and I'll slice it here and I can, oh, let me do it this way, I'll show you. You can take it and you can move your film around any place you want and you can make it as big as you want or whatever. So I can adjust it to do that. So let's go ahead and go undo that, undo that, undo that. Uh, one more. No, nope, one more. All right, back in the original spot. So you can you can adjust it to go ahead and, and um, so instead of having that that drop right there, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll before I remove it before I expand it to just the frame uh, what we want filling this whole thing, um, I'll fix that so you'll never notice it. another splice so every film that you see that I've done on on let's take three frames every film that you see every single film that you see that on my posted to my uh, YouTube channel has gone through this process not true that's not true every film prior to or after every film for the last two years has gone through this you have to imagine this has been a learning process for me. I, 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 nobody taught me this. I learned it, you know, all of this by myself. Um, I didn't go to school for it. Uh, it was just a, a hobby I had, and then it grew into a passion, and um, I loved doing it. So I learned how to make it better over over time. And I had some people criticizing some of the work I was doing. I said, well, they're criticizing for a reason. I'm, I'm screwing up. This looks like crap. And so I would get in there and I'd repair it. I'd make it right. And that's how I've gotten to the point now where some of my films, uh, most of my films, turn out really, really nice. There's another pop right there. I can see it right here, so I know what it is. I know where it's at. And that is a drop. And then later on, now I'll go ahead and I'll take all this and I'll run it into um, this program, Adobe After Effects. And, um, and I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to make you wait while I do all this because this right here, this this process, once I get to this point, this process will t take on this 12-minute uh, film. It'll have to run about six hours. And um, what you'll do is. I'll come over here and I'll take the edge of my sprocket hole and I'll use that as a registration so that all the film should follow that. Instead of, instead of moving all around, it should all follow that one little tiny area and that stabilizes it. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to actually let's go back in here and undo that. And um, so that's that's part of the process. But uh, um, and I'm not going to make you wait while I do all this tonight. I'm going to uh, this is part. The, uh, I'm going to end this pretty much, and this will be the end of part one. And then tomorrow, uh, this same time, about if you folks are interested and you want to watch this, and I'll show other things as well. I've got uh, um, I have a lot of neat things to show, and lot, um, uh, and you can learn a lot here. And if you have questions about things, um, always. Uh, ask. Um, uh, let me see here.
Well, um, right now, seven people uh, watching. If you know anybody that might be interested in this, uh, uh, let them know. And like I said, I'm gonna, I gotta figure out how to let people know that there's going to be a part two to this tomorrow night. And then um, after that, we'll do another film. I'm going to, uh, there, there. I have, I have films that um, that actually need to be reprocessed that um, uh, I've never really done anything with. But I did it uh, with an older system. So let me turn this around here. And, uh, uh, that's, uh, let's see here. Give you an idea. That's some of the relics that I've got laying around. Um, I've got some really neat films I want to um, uh, I want to show, but uh, they have to be they have to be cleaned. Uh, like I said, I only started doing this properly about two years ago, um, and uh, so I have some really cool old mom and pop stuff. They're silent films. I'm going to run those. I'll show those um, uh, being going through the uh, cleaning process using uh, the same equipment that I used earlier. Um, uh, this item, uh, the, the um, uh, uh, automatic rewinds is what I use to uh, do all my cleaning and a splicer, of course. And then uh, we take them over and we digitize them over here. So um, we're going to be doing that with a whole lot of stuff. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, stop on by tomorrow night. Uh, like I said, it'll be probably be about, uh, about 7 o'clock. And uh, matter of fact, I'll just make it 7 o'clock. I'll set it for that. Meanwhile, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, stopping on by. And uh, everybody, have a really, really good night. I'll be back tomorrow night. If you're here, thanks for the live feed. Yes, sir, CJ Penning. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be here, 7 o'clock for sure. And um, I'll, I'll try and I'm going to try and do this every few uh, every few days from here on out. Um, like I said, I need to uh, what the dollar cost would be for an Aussie to join. Um, I you know what Tess, I'm going to uh, I'm going to change things. Uh, the way I'm uh, the way it is right now is that uh, I have it um, three dollars, ten dollars, and uh, there's um, a two hundred and fifty dollar deal on there, but it's it. Um, I said it for that because I know certain people, I know there are people out there that have real money that are my age and don't really know what to do with it. And so I, I, um, they, 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 they invest in a lot of things on the hopes and dreams of the future. And that's what, uh, some of this is hopes and dreams to the future, but I'm, I'm going to change it around. It's going to be a dollar and three dollars and I'm going to leave this uh, $210 or $250 deal alone because um, I still believe those people are out there, but um, I'm going to try and, and get as many people to join Patreon as I possibly can because uh, really I'm, I'm getting tired of doing two versions of everything. <laughs> three, actually, it's three versions of everything because I, I have to do one version of every film that I do that goes into a stockpile or, or an archive, rather. It has no, uh, no, no uh, watermarks on it, and it's just, it's just a perfect film uh, finished and then I have a film that a version that goes to Patreon that has no commercials in it but it still has a watermark and then I have a version for YouTube that has a watermark and it has a tiny little advertising piece in the center um, to get people to go to Patreon um, or attempting to at least showing people that you know hey if you want commercial free you can go to Patreon and it's as little as three dollars a month but um, or that's where it's been it's going to be changed. So, um, at any rate, uh, that's what that's, but yeah, it's, I, I appreciate you asking that. And, um, like I said, all this is a process. I just started, I just started thinking about trying to make some money out of this. To, I need new equipment. That, that piece of equipment you're, you're looking at right now with the, the squirt can in front of it, that is, um, that needs to go bye-bye and I need to get a better piece of equipment. Um, I need to be able to do 35 millimeter and... I have 28 millimeter film that uh, uh, nobody's ever seen before. Stuff from about 1910, 19, 1910 to 1918, I believe, is when it was produced. And I think it was owned by, well, in fact, I'm sure it was owned by a company that was owned by uh, Thomas Edison at one time. 
So um, I have some interesting stuff, but I don't have any way of producing it. And um, I need that ability. So um, anyway, that's that story. You folks have a really good night, and thank you so very much for stopping on by. Bye-bye now. Uh, i got to figure out how to end this whole thing. <laughs>